Hello, hello, grade 12. Welcome back to the channel. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at sequence and series, and we are going through um the whole lesson. So I'll be teaching you about the sequence and series that we have. Right. So let's start with this, guys. What is the difference between a sequence and a series? Basically, what this means is that let me put an example. Let's say we have this here. We are given two, four, six, eight. Right. So this by nature is what we call an arithmetic sequence, right? So this is a sequence. So a sequence would be characterized uh, by the fact that we have what we call semicolons. The semicolons separate the terms, right? So the semicolons separate the terms. But then in a series, it is definitely the same thing. But then the only difference is that we might have two plus four, plus six plus eight or we might have it as two minus four minus six minus eight so with a series we say that uh, the plus sign or the minus sign separate the terms right so the difference between a sequence and a series is simply that with a series there is a continuation in the sense that you can add all these terms here and they give you the sum of the terms. So for this one, for the series, you can get the sum of the terms, but with the sequence, you can get the rule of the terms. As to understand that uh, from, from moving to this first term to the second term, from the second term to the third term, what is that, cons uh, that consistent value that they add or subtract? So for here, you can get the TN or the rule, or we call it the general formula, right? So for this one, you are allowed to get the general formula or the TN, or sometimes they call it the nth term. So all these words here, they mean the same thing. TN, general formula, nth term, they all mean the rule, right? So this is the rule that describes what happens from moving uh, from the first term to the second term to the third term all the way like that. So there's a particular rule or formula that we we, we find for that. So it's uh, we have to calculate that. Then, okay, that is it with sequence and series. That is the difference between a sequence and a series. Now, the, the sequence and series that we have in grade uh, 12. So in grade 12, this is what we're going to be dealing with. We'll be dealing with an arithmetic sequence or series, right? So we have arithmetic sequence and or series. Then we have a geometric sequence and series. And then from grade 11, we'll be looking at a quadratic sequence, right? So in most of the time, we won't be finding a series for this one. This one will just be a sequence. Now with the arithmetic sequence, do not be confused. This is still the linear pattern, right? This is the linear pattern that you learned from grade 11. It's just that now it has a new formula, right? So, okay, let's start with that. What is an arithmetic pattern or an arithmetic sequence? So starting with an arithmetic sequence, this is what we have. So suppose that you have this, this is a one, and then here we have maybe four, and then we have seven, and then we have um 10, right? So from this sequence here, we can see that we have a common difference, right? From moving from one all the way to four, you can see that if we want to calculate the difference here, we would simply say, so this is T1 because it's the first term, this is T2, this is T3, this is T4. If we wanted to find the difference in between the terms or we wanted to see what value we must add to consistently uh, carry on with this sequence, all we would have to do is take this second term and subtract it to the first term. Or we take the third term, subtract uh, the second term. So that means that the common difference, we can say it's T2 minus T1. Or we can simply say the common difference is also T3 minus T2. Or it can be T4 minus T3, right? All this will be giving us a consistent difference, right? So if we say 4 minus 1, that's equals to 3. If we say 7 minus 4, that's also equals to 3. If we say 10 minus 7, that's equal to 3. So this 3 that we found here, we call it the common difference, right? So it is indicated by the letter D. So we call it the 
common difference. So in order to in order for us to see an arithmetic sequence, that means we'd have to identify the common difference between our terms, right? So, okay, now that we have the common difference from this one, 4, 7, 10, we would deduce that our the 3 is the common difference. T1 here stands for A, right? Which A is the first term, right? Now, if we are required to find the general term for this uh, sequence here, which means uh, the rule. So if we are required to find the general formula, which sometimes they will say Tn, or the nth term or the rule this is all that we need to do right so the formula that we're going to be using is tn is equal to a plus n minus one and then d right so where the a here will be the first term right and then the d will stand for the common difference right then the tn will obviously be our nth term and then the n will be the position of the term right or the term uh, or simply just the term so the position of the term right so that means is it in term number one term number two or term number three so if we wanted to calculate this this is how we'd have it so we have one four seven ten our common difference is Three, so that means we have T n a plus n minus one d. Right, the a will be the first term. So that's what you substitute in here one, and then n minus one, and then for d you'll be substituting the common difference that you found. So this is three. Then all that you have to do is multiply with this three here. Right. So you have the one, and then what is three times n? that's 3n. What is 3 times negative 1? That's negative 3, right? So the tn will be equals to 3n minus 2. And there you go. Okay. So the other question that we should expect from this, so there are mostly three type of questions that they ask uh, relating to this. If you have now found tn, they might ask you, calculate a uh, t22 for example right so if you want to calculate t22 or you want to calculate the 22nd term right so this is the 22nd term you would simply say t22 and then where there is n you just simply substitute your 22 then all you have to do is punch all this in your calculator So you'd have 3 times 22 is equals to 66, then minus 2 is equals to 64. That's how you would have it. Now, the other question that you might as expect from this is, let's say they might ask you to calculate the value of n, calculate the value of n, or calculate so they will phrase it like this yes calculate let's phrase it like they phrase it in the exam calculate n for which the value of the sequence will be let's say will be 82 for example, calculate uh, n for which the value of the sequence will be 82. So the value of the sequence represents Tn. So in other words, they're saying, look for the value of n for which Tn is equal to 82. You need to understand this uh, question here. It's different from this one. With this one, we are looking for the value in the 22nd term, right? So term number 22 will be equals to 64. But then here you are already given the value for Tn now you are looking for the position whereby you will find the value 82, right? So all you need to do here is this.
So you will take your value as it appears here, and then just simply say Tn is equal to 3n minus 2. That was uh, your general formula or your n term. And then you go ahead, substitute the 82 here, then go equal to 3n minus 2. At this point, you can we can understand that we need to take this negative 2 and transpose it over to the side. So this is 82 plus 2 is equal to 3n. This will give us 84 and then it's equal to 3n. If we divide both sides by 3, our n value will be equal to what? 84 divided by 3. This gives us 28, right? So that means on the 28 term, we have our value for the sequence being equals to 82. So this is how you would solve a basic, a basic arithmetic questions, right? So, um, let's go ahead and maybe try to see some of these questions from the textbook. Okay, nice, absolutely. So, exercise one says determine the general term for the following arithmetic sequence. So, we are told that this is an arithmetic sequence. Then we have negative one, three, seven, right? So, to calculate the general term negative one, 3, 7, we can find the common difference here by saying T2 minus T1. So remember, D is equal to T2 minus T1. So this would be 3 minus negative 1, which will give us 4. So this is 4. If you say 7 minus 3, this is also 4 as well, right? Then now that we have the difference, to calculate, we only need to say Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 D. The A is our first term, it's negative 1. Then we have N minus 1. D is your common difference, so we have 4. So that's negative 1. 4 times N plus 4N. Then 4 times negative 1, that's negative 4. So we will end up having 4N minus 5. So that's our TN. Right. Um, let's maybe check B. So for B, we have 4, negative 2, negative 8. The difference, again, T2 minus T1. This would be negative 2 minus 4 will give us negative 6. So that's negative 6. If we say negative 8 minus negative 2, that's negative 6 as well. We have found the common difference. So we go ahead. Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1. D, what's our A? That's 4. And then here we have N minus 1. And then the D is negative 6, right? So we have 4, negative 6 times N. That's negative 6N. Negative 1 times negative 6, that's positive 6. So our TN is equals to negative 6N plus 10, right? From 6 plus 4. Then just like that, again, you have your general term. So let's move. Let's move to this one here. Determine the 38 term for each of the following arithmetic sequence, right? So if we are looking for the 38 term, if we are to use this one here, that means we cannot calculate the 38 term unless we know the what? The general term or the general formula, right? So that means we'd have to say negative 4 negative 8, negative 12. Then try to find the difference here by saying T2 minus T1. That's negative 8 minus negative 4. This gives us negative 4, right? Also, negative 12 minus negative 8. Note that if I have a negative value here, I must also include that inside the brackets, right? So that's negative 12 minus negative 8. This will give me negative 4, right? So this is negative 4. That's our common difference. Now to find our Tn, that's Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 D, right? But since we are looking for the 38 term, we might just as well not waste time and just go T38. So this means where there's N, I will have to substitute 38. What's my A? It's negative 4. That's the first term. And then my N, because we are looking for the 38 term, I'm going to substitute 38 there then minus one, 
then the D is negative 4. At this point, all I have to do is just punch this exactly as it appears in my calculator. Then it's negative 4 plus bracket 38 minus 1, close bracket. Then we say multiply that by negative 4. Right. So this is going to give me negative 152. So that's the value of the 38 term. Right. Okay. So let's uh, try it with something that looks a bit complicated, like D there. So for D, we have 6, 21 over 4, and then 9 over 2. So in order to find the difference, we've already deduced that we need to say T2 minus T1, right? So all we're going to do is say 21 over 4 minus 6. So this gives us a difference of negative 3 over 4. So let's try with this one and see if we're still going to find the same value. 9 over 2 minus 21 over 4. So if we say 9 over 2 minus 21 over 4, there we go. We still get the same value, guys. Negative 3 over 4, right? So this becomes our value for D, right? So nothing has changed. Whether you find this as a fraction or a decimal, nothing really changes. What you do is say Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 and then D. What's your A? That's your first term that's 6. But remember, we are looking for the 38 term. So where there is n, I'm just going to substitute 38, then minus 1. Then what's the d? It's negative 3 over 4, right? So 6 plus 38 minus 1 in brackets, and then multiply that by negative 3 over 4, right? So this is going to give me negative 87 over 4. We're just going to leave it at that because we can see everything else here has been indicated uh, using uh, the fractions, right? So we can just leave it like that. Then, okay, for this one, we can clearly say that we are already given the rules here. We are already given the rules. for the, So for this one, you can just simply say T38 and just substitute into the rule. Then that's three times 38 minus 4. So there's no need for you to uh, look for the common difference or anything. Just where there is k, you just substitute 38. Then 3 times 38 minus 4, that's equals to 110. And then uh, 110. Then if you were to do this one, t38 is equal to negative 2 times 38 plus 5. Then you'd simply just punch it in your calculator, negative 2 times 38 plus 5. That's negative 71. So for this one, so that's how you'd just uh, get those, right? So uh, I hope it's now, it now, it's now, it's now starting to make a uh, sense how you get all those values. Then, okay, let's uh, attempt this question here. We are told which term of the arithmetic sequence negative five to negative two is to one is equal to 94. So you see these questions I was talking about. For that one, they were looking for the value in the 38 term. But right now, they give you uh, the value, which is 94. Now they're looking for the term, right? They're looking for the term. That means what are they looking for? They're looking for n, right? So at this point, what you're supposed to do is to find the rule, of course. And then uh, find the difference in here. If you say difference is t2 minus t1. That's a negative 2 minus negative 5. So this will give us a positive 3. So this is 3 and then this is 3. Now to find your Tn, that's a plus n minus 1d. But then remember we are looking for n when a Tn is equal to 94. So for Tn, we substitute 94. Note how it's different from that one. Uh, on that other one that we were doing previously, we used to substitute the value to n. But then right now we are given the value for Tn and we are looking for n, right? So be careful with that one. Then A, that's the first term, it's negative 5, then plus n minus 1, then D is equal to 3, right? So we have 94, we can just straight out transpose this one. 94 plus 5 is equal to 3n minus 3 if we are multiplying this. So 94 plus uh, 5, that's equals to 99 so we'll have 99 plus 3 if we transpose this negative here then 3n so what is 99 plus 3 that's equals to 102 so we have 102 is equals to 3n divide both sides by 3 
then our n value is equals to 34. So that means we have 94 as a value in the 34th term, right? In the 34th term. Then let's go to this one. B says which term of the arithmetic sequence 4, uh, 2.5, 1 is equals to negative 66.5. So this is still the same question. We are still trying to find n, right? So first thing is to find the general formula or the nth term. Then there we go, t2 minus t1, right, to find the difference. So with the 2.5, note that this is not a separate value, this is 2,5. The, the terms here are separated by a semicolon. So this is a term, this is a term, and that is a term. So 2.5 minus 4, what does it give, it give us? Then it's a negative 1.5. If we say 1 minus 2.5, then it is also negative 1.5 as well, right? So that's our D, right? That's the value for D. Then to, to calculate Tn, this is Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1D. But then remember, we are given that Tn is negative 66.5. We're just going to go ahead here. Negative 66.5 is equals to the value for A is 4. That's the first term. So we have 4 plus, and then this is a N minus 1. Then we have D here, right? So the D is supposed to be negative 1.5, right? Then um, negative 66.5 minus this 4, we can just transpose it right away. Then here we have this negative 1.5 N and then plus 1.5. So if we deal with this negative 66.5 minus 4, uh, that's equals to negative 70.5 and then it's equal to negative 1.5n plus 1.5. At this point, we need to take this one and transpose it over to that side. So that's negative 70.5 minus 1.5. So if we say minus 1.5, that's negative 72. Then it's equal to negative 1.5n. If we divide both sides by negative 1.5, negative 1.5, our n is supposed to be 48, right? So that means negative 66.5 is in the 48 term. Now note this about n. So the few things that you need to note about the value of n, n can only be a natural number, right? So a can only be, uh, n can only be a natural number. That means it cannot be a decimal, it cannot, it cannot be a fraction, and then it cannot uh, be a negative value because that represents the position, right? So your n can only be a natural number. So it's n element of um, n, right? Natural numbers. Then um, that's it with this question. So all these questions that you are seeing here are quite similar to what we just uh, did, right? So the main key here is number one, the key takeaway from this question is that number one, you need to know how to find the general term, right? Or they might term it nth term, or they might say get the general formula, or they might say Tn, right? So either way, you have to know how to get this. Then number two, you must know how to calculate uh, the value using the n term, right? And then you must also be able to calculate uh, the term using the nth term, right? So after finding the general term, you must be able to calculate the value using the n term, which is what we did in the previous question. And then you must also be able to calculate the term using the n term, which is what we were doing with number three. Right. So these are the key takeaways with that question. Then, okay, so if we are now looking at geometric sequence, geometric sequence and series, with geometric sequence, we might have something like this. So if we have one, three, nine, 27. What you notice with a geometric sequence is that if we try to find the common difference, 
it will just be incons inconsistent, right? Then what do we do with this one? We simply just find the ratios, right? How do we find the ratio by saying R? So we represent R for common ratio or constant ratio. So this would be the constant ratio. So the R will be found by saying T2 divided by T1. Or you can say T3 divided by T2 or T4 divided by T3. Now to find my R, I would say 3 divided by 1 is 3. Or 9 divided by 3, still 3. Or 27 divided by 9 is still 3. So because you are finding the same ratio here, that means we have what we call a constant ratio. So in order to find the next value, if they were to ask you, get the next value, what you need to do is take this value here, multiply it by 3, right? As we can see here, 1 multiplied by 3 is 3. 3 multiplied by 3 is 9. 9 multiplied by 3 is 27. 27 multiplied by 3 is 81. Hmm. Right. So, If you have that, let's look at some of the questions that we have. So with this, you also need to note that from the question that we'll be doing, it is very crucial that you find Tn or the n term, and then also that you are able to calculate the value using the nth term and then also again you are able to calculate the term using the nth term right remember the n term is the rule so let's look at some of the textbook questions that we have on that so um on exercise two here from the mind action series textbook says determine the general term for each of the following geometric sequence we are given a2 is to negative one and then is to half then what are we going to do here to determine the general term we have two negative one and then we have half now we have already seen that to calculate a because this is a geometric sequence we know that we'll find the common ratio so find the common ratio we'll say t2 divided by t1 and t3 divided by t2 right so if we say negative one divided by two that's obviously equals to negative one over two and then again if we say one over two divided by negative one that's also negative one over two so we have found the common ratio right then the formula that we are supposed to use for this one is tn is equal to a r n minus one make sure that you note this formula here to find the general term of the geometric sequence it's tn is equal to a r n minus one where your a is your first term as we have already discussed then your r is your common ratio and then your tn is the n term and then the n is definitely the position of the term so what do you do you simply say tn what's your a that's your first term so you have two then what's your r that's negative one over two, and then you have n minus one. And just like that, guys, you have already found your general term. So there's not much that you, uh, you are supposed to do in terms of finding the general term for the geometric sequence. That's all that you need to do. Substitute your a value, substitute your r value, and then just simply, uh, uh, just simply write this the way it appears, right? Then you are done. You have found the general term. So let's try it with another one. Let's say um, you have, which one can we do? Okay, uh, let's do B anyways. And this is 2, 8, and then 32. To find your R, you need to say T2 divided by T1, T3 divided by T2. So what's your T2? It's uh, 8 divided by 2. Then here we have 32 divided by 8. So 8 divided by 2, that's 4. And then 32 divided by 8, that should also be equals to 4. 
So we have found our constant ratio. So we can say Tn is equal to Ar n minus 1. Substitute our value for A. So what's our first term? It's 2. Then what's our value for R? That's 4. And then write this one as n minus 1 like that. Then just like that, you are done. You leave it like that. Then we can also do it with D, since I can see that uh, this one is written in terms of um, decimals. So we have 1 is 2, 0 0.5, and then we have 0 0.04. Again, if we want to find our R, this is T2 divided by T1, and then T3 divided by T2. So we have 0 0.2 divided by 1, and then we have 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.2. Right, so punching that in a calculator, this will give us 0 0.2, obviously, then 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.2. This is also 0 0.2. So we have our R is 0 0.2. This is Tn is equal to A, R, N minus 1. What's your value for A? That's 1. And then what's your value for R? It's 0 0.2 and then N minus 1. Because uh, you have 1 here, you can just simply then write this as 0 0.2 and then all to the exponent of n minus 1, right? Then we are done like that. Okay, so this is how you'd be finding the general formula for the geometric sequence. Then um, number 2, now we are required to determine the ninth term for each of the following geometric sequence. So if you are given if you are given this here, the first thing that you need to do, obviously, is to find uh, the general term. So we have 128, we have 64, and then we have 32, right? So your R will be T2 over T1, and then here we have T3 over T2. What's your T2 is 64 and then divided by 128, then here you have uh, 32 divided by 64. So to find our R, so let's do it, 64 divided by 128, that's equals to 1 over 2 half, right? So obviously this one, it's also supposed to give us 1 over 2. Then uh, we write our Tn is A R N minus 1, but then our value for A is 128. So we have our 128 here. Our value for R is 1 over 2, but then remember we are looking for the ninth term, right? So looking for the ninth term, that means where there's n, I need to substitute 9. So I have 9 minus 1. This is 128, and then you simply punch it the way it appears in your calculator. Do not change anything, right? So when you punch it like that in your calculator, your value is 1 over 2. So the ninth term will be equals to 1 over 2. Then you are done just like that. Okay, let's try it with something else. Um, so, if we have to look for something that is quite challenging, let's go for C. Then 4 over 9, and then we have 1, 1 over 3, one whole number, 1 over 3, and then we have 4, right? So, if we are given something like this, the wisest thing to do is just change this one to a a, a a a prop a proper fraction or improper fraction then uh, this is three times three times one plus one uh, that's equals to four over three right so this becomes an improper fraction right so we have our four here then we can now find the difference say not the difference the common ratio meant to say by saying r is equals to t2 divided by t1 and then T3 divided by T2, right? So we go ahead because this is a fraction. You don't want to write it like this. Avoid this, guys. 4 over 3 over uh, 4 over 9. This uh, can be a bit confusing and then can be a bit uh, challenging when it comes to having to press it in your calculator. So rather uh, express it like this. Remember, when you are doing this, all that you are, you are doing here is saying, term number two divided by term number one, right? So because they're expressed in terms of fractions, you can just say four over three divided by four over nine. This is still the same as doing that. 
then we can just simply say 4 over 3 divided by uh, 4 over 9. So this is going to give us 3, right? And then again, even if you take this, you say 4 divided by 4 over 3. This is 4 divided by 4 over 3. It's still equals to 3, right? So you have found your common ratio. Do not try to overcomplicate this by putting a fraction on top of another fraction. Just simply change your fractions into divide. So you say 4 over 3 divided by 4 over 9. You say 4 divided by 4 over 3. So you'd still get the same answer. Then your R is equals to 3. Now we have Tn is equal to A, R, N minus 1. Your A, the first term, we are given as 4 over 9. So we have 4 over 9 here. Then our R is 3, but we are looking for the ninth term. So we'll have 9 minus 1, right? So to calculate that, 4 over 9, and then we have 3, and then to the exponent of 9 minus 1, that's equals to 2916, right? So that's the value that we get. Okay, then um, looking at these other ones, looking at these other ones here, these are quite simple. These are quite simple because already they gave us TK, so they already gave us the general term or the general formula. So all you have to do is say T nine. So where they scale, you're just going to substitute nine, and then you just go ahead three. And then 2 over 3. So here it's more like they already gave you the rule. Then 6 minus uh, 9. And then this is going to be 3. And then in bracket, 2 over 3. And then we have to the exponent of 6 minus 9. So the value that we're going to get from that one is 81 over 8, which is definitely correct. Right. Then even with this one, all you'd have to do is say 2,400 and then 1 over 2. Then where there's k, you put your 9 there, then 9 minus 1, then you are looking for t9. So t9 is equal to 2,400, and then bracket 1 over 2 to the exponent of 9 minus 1, right? So the value that you get is 75 over 8, which is absolutely correct. Then um, let's look at this one here. Let's look at this one here. Number three, it says, uh, which term of the geometric sequence 2618 is equal to 4,374, right? So we have 2,618. Then what we'll do with this one is to say 6 divided by 2. This will give us 3. 18 divided by 6, this will give us 3, right? At this point, we now understand how to get our common ratio, right? Then uh, we have Tn is equal to A, R, N minus 1. But because now we are looking for the term, that means we are looking for the value of N, right? For which the value will be equal to 4,374, right? So we can go ahead and say Tn is equal to A, R, N minus 1, then say 4,374. Then our A is 2, our R, is 3, and then we have n minus 1, right? At this point, what you need to do, do not make the mistake of taking this one and multiplying uh, multiplying it with that. It does not, uh, it, it is not applicable, right? You cannot multiply a number that is without a fraction. I mean, that is without an exponent with a number that has an exponent here. So this is just a coefficient, and this is a power, right? So you cannot multiply the two. Right, that's one thing that you need to note. So there's no two times three here is equals to six. That's not what you do. What you need to do here is to get rid of this coefficient by dividing both sides by this two. So that's 4,374 divided by two. So that's two, one, eight, seven, and then it's equals to three to the exponent of n minus one. Then you need to change this one. Remember, we are working with exponents, so it would be best to write this one in exponential form. Then if you got that answer, you just say equal and then shift fact. This will be written as 3 to the exponent of 7, which is 3 
is equal to 3 to the exponent of n minus 1. At this point, we can see that the bases are the same, so we can drop down the exponents. So if we drop the exponents, we'll be left with 7 is equal to n minus 1. Then our value of n is 7 plus 1 is equal to n, then our n is equal to 8, right? So that means the eighth term will have at a, a will have this geometric sequence being equal to 4374, right? So at the eighth term, you'll have the value of the geometric sequence being 4374. That's what it means, right? Then um, now they can ask the same question, but then in another way, they say determine the number of terms in the sequence, uh, this, and then we are given, so we are given negative three over eight, uh, 3 over 4, and then negative 3 over 2. Then they skipped the whole lot of values, and they decided to give you the last value here. Now, understand this. Given that you are given a class list, maybe, for example, and then you wanted to find out how many learners are in the class without having to count the heads in the class, what you do with the class list is to look for the last uh, the, 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 the last name there, right? So the last learner on the class list, and then look for the position, right? Look for the number in which they appear, right? So if it, if they're in number 35, for example, then you'd conclude that in your class, there are 35 learners, right? Without having to count. This is the same uh, approach that will be, that, that will be taking here. Because we are given the last value here, the value of the last term, we can actually find uh, how many number of terms are there by simply calculating what position is this one. If we find that this one is in position number 20, that means there were 20 terms. I hope it makes sense. Right, then we have negative three over eight is to three over four, and then we have negative three over two. Then obviously we need to get our common ratio. So again, because we have fractions, what am I going to do? We'll simply say three over four, divided by negative three over eight. So I will not try to complicate this by putting a fraction on top of fraction, no. That's a recipe for disaster. Three over four divided by negative three over eight. That's uh, gonna give me R is equal to negative two. Then I'm just gonna prove it with this one to see if it's consistent. Negative three over two divided by three over four. Then if we do that one, negative three over two divided by three over four, it still gives me r is equal to negative 2. So I already have my value for r, it's negative 2. Then if I'm looking for this, there we go, tn is equal to a r n minus 1. Then for tn, I'm just going to go ahead and substitute this value that I'm given. This is 192. And then my a is the whole, this value here, right? We have negative the a, remember it's the first term, negative 3 over 8. And then my r is negative 2. Then n minus 1. Right, so this, uh, again, I cannot take this and multiply with that one. It does not happen, it's not applicable. What I need to do is divide both sides by this negative three over eight. You can divide by negative three over eight, or if you are simply applying the tips and times maths, this is what you can do. So divide by negative three over eight, both sides, or simply just multiply by the reciprocal, which is negative eight, uh, negative 8 over 3, right? But then either way, it's still the same thing, 192 divided by negative 3 over 8, right? So this is going to give me negative 512 is equal to negative 2 and minus 1. Now, because I'm only left with this, I can divide both sides by, neg by a negative, then I'll be having 512 is equal to 2, to the exponent of n minus one. Now remember the 512, I need to write it in terms of exponents. So I will say 512 equals shift factorize, then this is going to give me two to the exponent of nine, right? Now I'm using the law that says if the bases are the same in an equation, I can just drop down the exponents. So this is n is equal to n minus one, and then my n, if I transpose this negative one, is going to be 10, right? So that means a, uh, in conclusion, we can say how many terms are here? There are 10 terms, right? We have 10 terms. So that's how you go about it, guys.